This is the Krillcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm Tim. I'm good with that. We can call you Tim from now on. <laughs> TMM Growing Tim. Up. Growing yeah, up. Matured. Growing up. All right. Um, this is not the Half-Life script. Hold on a second. There we go. All right. So this video is about the legacy of the Konami Code creator. Um, rest in peace, Mr. I'm going to butcher his name, so unfortunately you just got to forgive me for it. Kazuhisa Hashimoto. I might have got that awesome. right. Um, he is actually credited as the original creator of the Konami Code, and Konami recognizes him as the creator of this code. It was actually never meant to be used by actual fans of Konami games. Um, famously, he stated that uh, the game was... He knew he wasn't going to be able to complete the game um, unless he made it a little easier for himself. So he created this code in order to allow himself to finish the game he was working on. <laughs> That's the short version. All right? So if you don't know... <laughs> If you don't know, the Konami code is up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. It's probably the famous, most famous code ever made in a video game, and it was made to be simple like that so he could remember it every time he was working on a game. He just insert it. Mm -hmm. So he passed away on February 25th, 2020. And uh, based on Wikipedia, here we go. <laughs> um, Hashimoto is recognized as the creator of the Konami Code. Hashimoto had inadvertently created it while bringing the arcade version of Gradius to the NES back in 1986. Hashimoto knew the arcade version of the game was hard, and he himself would not likely finish it. So he added a sequence of button presses that he could easily remember that gave the ship he controlled in the game the full range of power-ups, so that he could easily complete the game for in-house testing purposes. He had intended to remove the programming code for that sequence before the game was shipped, but the game had shipped with the code included. Some players of Gradius had discovered Hashimoto's sequence and reported it back to Konami, and it became popular to use uh, Hashimoto's sequence in future Konami titles by other developers. Larger public awareness of this Konami code came with the worldwide popularity of Contra in 1988, mm -hmm. in which entering the code gave the player additional lives. Since then, the Konami code is not only used across other video games from other developers and publishers in similar manners, but as Easter eggs and other forms of media. Um, so that's that's the background story of the Konami Code with Kazuhisa Hajimoto. I think I said that wrong that time. I think you. I think yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. All right. Comment below. Let me know how bad I did. Um, mm -hmm. But in his memory, please don't say anything nasty on this on this video. Okay. That, that includes you, Tim. Respect. Um, <laughs> so he's credited as a producer of looks like six games: Gun Gauge. Um, ISS Pro Evolution, it's a soccer game. International Superstar Soccer Pro 98, Crypt Killer, Goldstorm, and Goldstorm. So, multiple soccer games and then a couple other games, Gun Gauge and Crypt Killer. Mm -hmm. He was credited as a designer in, I'm going to completely mess this up, but I think it's pronounced Ganbari Goemon, Karukuri Dochu. It's a 1986 game. Um, in programming and engineering, he's credited for Lethal Enforcers. Snatcher, Life Force, and Gradius 3. Specifically for audio, he's credited for Snatcher. Um, he was credited as a, a extra thanks on ISS Pro Evolution 2, which came out in 2001. Gradius, uh, Parodius, which I believe is like a Gradius type game. I'm not 100% aware. <coughs> uh, Rush and Attack. I think it's a play on words to say Russian Attack, but mm -hmm. neither here nor there. And then he was uh, credited in a game called Badlands, or uncredited in a game called Badlands, but later on recognized as being a part of that team. Hmm. So uh, what we're going to talk about today in honor of Kazuhisa Hashimoto, um, what do we remember specifically about the legacy of the Konami Code? I'm going to let Tim start it off. Hmm. Well, uh, I never knew it was the Konami Code. I always knew it was the Contra Code, because hmm. that's how old I am, but <laughs> I, that's where I first used it, was playing Contra, because I knew I was a little kid, and uh, that game was super, 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 super hard, and I hated it, but I thought it was mm -hmm. super cool, because I got to shoot guns, so I wanted to play it, and when, um, I can't remember, when one of my friend's brothers told us about that, you know, there's a cheat code for that game, and I did not know those things even existed, mm -hmm. and uh, later we found out that um, we were using on like a Ninja Turtles game or something. Like, there yeah, several games. TMNT, like, it, one it of those. Just, yeah, I was going to say, there's a couple other even non-shooter yeah, games. Yeah, can you actually look up a list of what games has a code in it? 
it would be way too long of a list for us to pull on this. Yeah, Yeah, Contra's awesome. Oh, man. Bringing back some some good memories right there. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. This and Mega Man. Mm -hmm. Both of those games make me want to, like, I never wanted to play either of them again. Mm -hmm. So I just kept losing and losing and losing. (laughs) And then you were like, Konami code time. Yep. Here's some gameplay until I die. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Great title. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Anyways, um, Will, did you ever end up using... And if you didn't use the Konami code specifically or didn't know it that way, did you ever find yourself using cheat codes in games? Oh yeah, I use tons of cheat codes. The thing is, so... Looking at this cheat code, I know the cheat code, which is why I was asking to bring up a list, because I, I don't think I ever used it on a Konami game, but I've used this cheat code before. Um, right. And I used to use cheat codes all the time in, in the old Grand Theft Auto games. Yeah. Uh, so, like, GTA 3 and, um, like, Vice City. So you get, like, the unlimited uh, am- ammo and like, health and stuff. <laughs> um, I'm trying just... to think of... There's some other classic games I used to do cheat codes with. Uh, so I think Star Fox 64 has a cheat code. So back in the day, uh, CheatCC.com. That yep. was like, man. Yeah. yeah. And Cheat Planet. Cheat Planet, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I had to write it down in a little notepad. <laughs> <that I> can... <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I actually had the um, action replay for the Game Boy Advance at one point in time. Mm. That's cool. I never used it for anything, so I ended up selling it years later. Which I never do, but it was something I literally never used. Um, the but the Game Boy uh, AR the action replay wound up making a lot of money for me. I made like a hundred and something bucks on it because it was like hmm. extremely rare. Apparently, wow! Didn't know that. Oops, <laughs> sold it anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I think it was worth probably about one hundred and fifty if I would have had everything like the box and all that stuff. But I only had like the device itself and it had no codes on it. So somebody had to sit there on their Game Boy Advance going click 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 click. Yeah, it would have taken forever. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not doing this. And I didn't have a 32-bit operating system to run it because the software was never updated to 64-bit because Game Boy Advance. Nobody was really oh, using wow. 64-bit at the time. Right. Um, but yeah, so I remember using that kind of stuff. But the Konami code is, like, iconic. There's been so many Easter eggs in different games where if you did that, it'd be like, you're a cheater. And then it'd be like, ha, 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 and make the game harder. <laughs> I think Konami actually did that at one point in time. Like, they discovered people were doing this, and they were like, nah, let's make this harder on you. Right. And then the game got harder. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> no, funny, though. After we found out that it worked on Ninja Turtles, like, we tried it on every single game oh, that I we had. You. And, yeah, you know, never did it work on any of the other ones, but... Yeah, whatever. I'm sure I'm sure that um, they'll start putting it in games again as, a, like, an a honor um, yeah. for Kazuhisa Hajimoto and his mm-hmm. career. They, they have to. I mean, they have to. Maybe they'll re-release one of these games that he was part of, as like a memorabilia, a memorabilia, um, a, a memento to his life accomplishments with the company. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty cool. They should do that. Yeah, agreed. Um, but I do remember <laughs> specifically. There's a Star Wars game, um, Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds. It's like an Age mm-hmm. of Empire style Star Wars game. If you typed in "That's No Moon," you got the Death Star. <laughs> so you just like ravage awesome. everybody. Mm. I used to just like infinite spawn the Death Star. Like I'd have like five hundred Death Stars just raging across the map, and I'd win every campaign scenario that way. <laughs> <laughs> it was just something stupid. It was fun, and like I feel like this is just one of those things. It's just some something so simple and yet so so much fun that everybody would remember um, if they've ever used it anyway. And was this like the first? cheat code the first like well-known popularized cheat right. code that anybody could use right you didn't need any hacking you didn't need to know computer programming you just needed the mm-hmm. inputs on your controller and it was relatively simple once people figured it out yeah. it was meant to be a code that was easily accessible to anybody that knew it but at the same time it wasn't like normal movements in the game that you would just do and yeah, accidentally find out. Probably wouldn't find out an accident. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to kind of know what you were doing. So the question is, how did it get? How the cat get out of the bag? And we'll probably never know. Um, so the last question I have is, um, you know, aside from this, uh, the lasting legacy is 
he moved up in the company in Konami, right? I'm trying mm-hmm. to remember the exact position he finished out his life with. But Konami, obviously, he's very much associated with Konami. If I could type, that would be good. Uh, Kazuhisa, hold on. There it is. All right, so let's see. So yeah, he continued to work at Konami throughout the rest of his life, um, and he ended up becoming the executive vice president of Star Online. So yeah, he just moved up in the company. Very important mm-hmm. to Konami, and um, you know, it's it's a sad day when you lose such a important and well known um, person such as Kazuhisa Hashimoto. So rest in peace. Um, keep his family in our thoughts and prayers not to sound corny or anything but um, <laughs> that's it no. the legacy of the Konami Code creator mm-hmm. very well known for the Konami Code that's for sure everybody in the US recognizes that that's a thing whether they knew it was the Konami Code or not yeah or if this guy created it everyone at least knows this code I'm pretty certain I, yeah. this code is in Grand Theft Auto like, I, I think probably I, is I think you might I be probably right is. yeah but is there any uh, final thoughts you guys want to give? I know I kind of like put it to a sour note at the end. This, a little the bit. thing is, like talking about this has made me realize I have not tried to do any cheat codes in games in like a decade. Like, is this still a thing? Online services all but killed cheat codes. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I kind of want to just put this this code now into every game that I have and see what happens. <laughs> I would say the last systems that officially used cheat codes were probably the uh, GameCube, PlayStation 2, and the Xbox. Mm-hmm. And the Dreamcast, if you have one of those. Yeah. Um, prior to, or after those consoles, there's a few games that had them, but anything with an online element or, like, say, gamer score associated with it, they wouldn't want you to be able to use cheat codes in order to True. beat the game. That's why your glitches get patched out. Even if a glitch could help you, they patch it out because they don't want you to have an easy way to get the gamer score. Mm. You remember how glitches used to be treated as something fun? Like yeah. the super bounces in Halo and different right. other bugs in other games? It's not yeah. a bug, it's a feature. It's yeah. A- I did like that in the anniversary version of Halo 1 and 2, they did, did not take out most of those glitches. Mm-hmm. They left them in there. It was cool. Yeah, no, that was really nostalgic. So, Anyway, with that being said, um, rest in peace, Hashimoto, um, Kazuhisa Hashimoto. And uh, yeah, as always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm Tim. And we will see you. Uh, next to Curlcast. Bye, guys. <laughs>